Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is the Accurate International ATX and 6.5 Creedmoor. You're joining me on a very windy day today at the range, but let's see how we get on on paper, get it all zeroed, set up, try some different types of ammunition, and hopefully later on we'll progress out some steel targets at longer ranges. Stick with us, thanks for watching. The ATX has a 10 round twin column magazine, which means that ammunition will just pop in from the top. If necessary, you can load it while it's in through the ejection port, put it in the rifle, but why make it hard for yourself if you don't need to? The magazine port itself is asymmetric. There's a push button on the front of the trigger guard there, which is ambidextrous. You can use either hand, pop it out, and it locks solidly in place. The bolt has six lugs, so it's a 60 degree lift. And that's all it takes. The cheek piece is adjustable for ideal scope alignment both laterally and vertically. It's all Allen key adjustable so it locks well in position. It's a slender profile so it fits under your cheekbone and it's smooth so it slides easily under your cheeks so it doesn't jar your head at all under recoil. The recoil pad is adjustable vertically and rotationally. There's a thumb screw on the side and you can just undo that and put it where you want it. I'm going to twist it slightly as that's just my preference and it's quite high up. Length of pull is also adjustable, there are Allen key sockets on the side. The trigger is a two-stage unit, it is absolutely crisp and super reliable, it's adjustable too. This is the match unit supplied now on this ATX as opposed to the standard unit on the AT or the AX systems. It is lighter in weight and it is a delight to use for competition shooting. As you can see, feeding is smooth, ejection is purposeful, there are no problems with that.
The grip is an AR15 type unit, so reach to trigger is actually quite short. You can put an adjustable thumb rest on the other side. Depending on what rear bag you're using, there is an underside support here, which you can put your bag under or you can use a monopod on. You probably see from the first video that my wrist is a little bit cocked out because of the rear bag underneath that I happen to be using today. But there's actually a lot of space there to put your wrist in so you can get more assured trigger positioning. The heavy barrel is screw cut 5 8 by 24 for a sound moderator or muzzle brake. Here you can see the spanner flats used to unscrew the barrel from the action. It's a standard screw cut tenon that threads into the action and the action is pressure bearing. There's also a lock screw on the side of the action. I've been using the rifle with a Wildcat Evolution sound moderator. This has given me great sound reduction. Recoil reduction isn't really an issue because it's only a 6.5 Creedmoor and a heavy rifle so there's very little recoil at all. AI's forend is very stiff and it has both key lock system on the sides and the base and also a full length Arca Swiss rail which makes it easy to add to a tripod. You'll note back at the action here there's a barricade stop as well. Here you can see the hole for your Allen key, which allows you to undo the action and screw the barrel out. The threading and crowning is extremely neat. There is some powder fouling here because guess what? I actually use these rifles. The crown itself is slightly recessed to protect it from any external damage factors. The rifle is a cut rifle barrel. It's a four groove unit and it's notably easy to clean after shooting. There's a Picatinny rail for scope mounting and it's inclined to give you more elevation for the long range shooting this gun is going to be used for. This rifle is only currently available in 6.5 Creedmoor, but that's not to say the barrels can't be interchanged and you can use anything in a 308 action length with a 308 bolt face on this model, which is 0.473 of an inch. Things like 308 or 6mm Creedmoor may well come along and be more interesting. There may well be a case where aftermarket barrels come out in things like 6mm Creedmoor or 308 and this will suit some users. The bolt release catch is on the left side of the action, but depending on your exact cheek piece position, it might or might not slide underneath it. You can get this rifle with a folding stock unit and that will also make it easier to clean. You do need to remove the cheek piece and drop the recoil pad to fit a cleaning rod through the action for a full cleaning. You can add whatever accessories you want to the front of the rifle on the fore end for whatever sling or bipod you want to use. The back end of the rifle shows quick release stud anchor points. There are also further anchor points for clip-on accessories. Bolt operation is super slick, 60 degree lift and the handle is easy to grasp and use. The safety catch is forward for fire, middle for safe with bolt operation or rearmost with the bolt fully locked and safe. I found it impossible to jam this bolt at any operation speed and it also carries full length flutes to make sure dirt or debris won't cause a problem. Cartridges or not, that is how fast it acts if you need it to. The ease of operation on the bolt shaft minimises the disturbance to the rifle's position when you're aiming. This pin on the back acts as a cocked action indicator. It's both visible and tactile. The wheel in the recoil pad allows you to unlock it and you can twist it wherever you like and also move it up and down to suit your needs. AR15 style grip is rubberized and it gives you great tactile perception on it. There's a slight ridge at the bottom to keep your fingers in place. Reach to trigger is actually quite good at around 70 millimeters from the throat itself. So what can I tell you to sum up about this rifle? It's hard for me to not say this is one of the finest rifles I've ever used. I do personally like this rifle a lot. 
I would love to own one. They are quite expensive and I don't specifically have the purpose for one, but in the last week these have proven themselves without doubt to be world class performers. Uh, on the world stage, uh, world championships have just been won with this rifle, so I think that says far more than I can particularly comment about it. But just to cover a few of the little features I like, this forend is super stiff. It's narrow, yet it's also slimline profile. It fits through barricades. It's just a great piece of kit. It's flat, you've got the arc around, you've got the barricade stop too. AI magazines work flawlessly. They're easy to load either in or out of the gun and you can drop around in the chamber, close the bolt and you know drop around into the follow on top of the follower here, close the bolt. So if you need that emergency backup shot, it's there. Pick it in your rail mate scope mounting, completely problem free. And the instruction book supplied of this rifle is one of the most detailed I've seen. You also get full trigger instructions, spare springs for the trigger to change the trigger weight and there are lots more details um, about this gun and the specifications towards the end of this video. Other things I can tell you about it, the trigger is sublime. I often say that blazers have the best triggers of a factory sporting rifle. I, couldn't, I cannot deny that this is the finest trigger I have ever used. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily better than other triggers but it is just so crisp and refined and adjustable it's just hard to knock in any way shape or form and it arrives from the factory adjusted in just just with fantastic precision i run out of superlatives on this gun and um, all little things i like about it that are really less obvious um let's let's cover the barrel change now this this actually is quite an interesting fact because you've got these little um grip pads on the inside of the items here so that make sure make sure that items do lock well in position without having to be particularly highly tensioned. Yes, you do need to take the cheek piece off to take the bolt out if it's in certainly a low position and you might need to drop the recoil pad like that to put your cleaning rod through. But interestingly, under here, and this is one of the ridiculous things I love, there's a little ball detent under there that holds the Allen key. Uh, that Allen key is what you need to adjust the cheek piece height and also the lateral position of the cheek piece. I'll just see if I can pop that completely out. So that's the underside. So when you're actually um, carrying the rifle, that slots in there, and there's a little ball detent there with a ball bearing on a spring, and it just clips in place. I just think things like that just show where this rifle comes from. Um, so place finger underneath the front of the cheek piece, and pop that comes back out and that's the only, the only real tool you need for any major adjustments or changes to the rifle. Obviously you can do the overall length change here, length of pull, but the thing that people are very interested in which I haven't perhaps covered is there's a little hole there on the side of the action and if you put this allen key in there making sure the gun is obviously unloaded, bolts open, just undo that now, you can do that. There are spanner flats on the barrel if you need them, but that actually unscrews. Um, I might have to speed this up, but you can see here perhaps the, um, the tenon coming out of the action. Now, this is actually a standard AX action, which will carry any of the you know, short action calibers. So, 308, 65 Creedmoor, 260, etc. A um, good friend of mine's got one in 260 and a 308, swaps the barrels all the time. Return to zero is within one click on his rifle uh, at 100 meters, which is 0 0.01 milliradian. So I'm nearly there. Obviously, you know, you don't do this in an absolute massive hurry, but you can certainly see you don't need a huge amount of tools for it. And I'm just supporting the weight just so it doesn't damage the threads on the way out. And there we go. So that is your AI barrel. You can buy AI barrels pre-chambered and they just clips, they just go straight into the gun. So I could take this out and put another one in straight from the factory. It doesn't need head spacing, it doesn't need any kind of change at all. You can see the beautiful machining standards on here, proof marks, chambering, etc. So it's a little bit off balance now I've taken that out, but wow, you certainly feel how rear heavy the gun is when you haven't got the barrel in. Because this is quite a chunky barrel. Now, I'll talk to you while I put this back in. So, slot that in there, just support it so it's going in nice and straight. And guess what? Beautiful clean threads. Some people will put it in vertically like this, it's a little bit easier to align. 
The threading at the muzzle is identical, it's, it's just beautifully performed, there's no too chatter, nothing like that. Now I've been using this rifle for about two months, it's not my rifle, I do have to look after it, and okay, I'm not one for safe queens in terms of guns, but you know, I've, I've looked after this one, just like the other AIs you've been using, and the Serico actually has been pretty tough. Now I've put that on hand tight, and I've had this barrel on and off hand tight, and, and it just works, and all I do is nip that back up there, which just crimps the action onto the threads because the bolt lugs themselves lock into the abutments within the action. And then I can put this back in here. Just remember which side it goes on. Is it that side? Yes. And clip that's back in. So I've just swapped the barrel on the rifle with everything that's clipped into the rifle anyway. The bolt handle is superb. It's fast, it's smooth, you'll see in the video. Now, one thing I am going to talk about when I was originally zeroing this rifle, it was a windy day and I didn't have a huge amount of ammunition. So I just wanted to get it zeroed, check a couple of things out and it was fine. But, you know, it didn't shoot the tiniest group in the world. And so many people say, oh, where are all the best, where are all the tiny groups, where are all the teeny tiny groups? Well, all I can say is this, I didn't shoot many on paper because it's just no fun. It was so reliable, there is no problem and I will absolutely say this is a sub half MOA gun to those who think that is the measure of all rifles, the accuracy and precision with which it can shoot. Well, this is probably the most accurate rifle I've ever shot in terms of its consistent precision, which is still down to factory ammunition. Uh, I have shot smaller groups with it through with hand loads, but we don't talk about those, do we, on a factory, uh, on a factory rifle. Um, I have no doubts about its performance and capability whatsoever. Had I the money in the bank um, and the use for it, because I don't shoot competitively, I'm not to that level. I like the precision of the rifle, I like the accuracy of the rifle, but I'm not going to compete with it. Um, that's specifically what this has been designed for, and it's taken everything about Accuracy International, the AX action, and moulded it to a stock which is ideal for precision rifle competition usage. The fact that the action is bolted into the stock rather than bonded into the stock doesn't seem to make any great difference and it does of course make cleaning and maintenance either, easier. Those are all covered in the user manual, specifically stripped down of the vault factors like that. So I think this is a great rifle. I think Accuracy International have done a 10 out of 10. They have set themselves a design goal and they have achieved that design goal. And I kind of held back on doing this final review because I wanted those who shoot better than me to prove what I was thinking. The Precision Rifle World Championships have just happened. The AI rifle has performed superbly well. So I think I'm going to congratulate all those shooters and Accuracy International for making a rifle that was not only attractive to their design needs and requirements, it produced them when it mattered. And thank you to Accuracy International. Thank you to Sportsman Gun Centre for sending me a rifle which reinvigorates my love of shooting. Um, would I own one? <laughs> to be honest, I'm getting a bit old now, the barrel's quite heavy. Um, I do actually like the slightly lighter barrel on, on, uh, on a friend's rifle, which he had pre-custom chambered. But, um, you know, that's, that's, that's them me being silly and me being personalised towards it, because I think the one thing about this gun that is just stunning, it's the trigger. I mean, AI have done exactly what they've done before in terms of the action mechanics. The barrels are great. They're their own cut rifle barrels. They are superb and it cleans very easily. Um, but the trigger just changed what was the AT, what was, what was the AT to become the ATX. And you know, the AT and the AX are the same action. The AX MC is a longer action, but they're all kind of made from the same things, just with slightly different, different dimensions. So this stock is the big change. It's light, it's stiff. It's, it's low profile, keeps the weight down close to the ball line, magazines up there, your barricade stops there, and you've got full adjustability here, and you've got lots of space underneath for your cheek and your jaw to not be displaced away from the stock. The lateral adjustability on the cheek piece, which is just, I've just loosened it a second, is ideal for great scope alignment. And you can track your bullet trace and impact through this rifle as well as anything I've ever used, custom or standard. So, there we go. 
please like, please subscribe, please comment, and uh, don't forget to click the notification bell, ding dong here, because that's what keeps you in chat, and it keeps you in touch with my channel and what's going on. I'm not formulaic, I don't do things to a script, I believe I speak from a spontaneous opinion. And uh, yeah, I like this gun. I don't really want to send it back, but I'm never going to use it for what it's truly designed for. And I think the greatest accomplishment or achievement or design for a rifle is to be used for its goal. And I applaud AI for this rifle. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Right, my noble assistant David is going to have a go for the uh, Accuracy International ATX. He's just watched me and listened to me wax lyrical about it, and he's now going to have a go himself. Dave, what was my overall opinion of this rifle in one word? Perfection. No, it's not totally perfect. You do have to move the cheek piece to get the cleaning rod through. That's the only thing that's wrong with it. The cheek piece, by the way, is vertically adjustable and laterally adjustable. There's a load of space here for your jaw to fit in, so you're not, you know, nudging your jaw out of the way. The recoil pad, adjustable length of pull, you've got a Picatinny bag rider, and you've also got here a uh, fully adjustable vertically and rotationally recoil pad. I've set it up with 14 and an eighth inch length of pull, which is perfect for me on this gun. Right then, Dave, five shots, ring that steel. If you don't hit it, you, you're just wrong. You'll note this rifle has excessive space, which is plentiful for Dave's beard as well. Proper operator look there, Dave. You're out. Click. <laughs> right. Three words. This is live. He's never shot it before. Three words. It's simply faultless. No, you've got to move the cheek piece to clean it. We don't clean rifles, though. I mean, that's just something other people do. That's something you can forgive. Oh, definitely so. Um... Bit lost for words, aren't yeah. you? Told you it was <laughs> tart, didn't I? <laughs>